Hey, welcome back to another episode of Dead Men Walking All Podcast. Right. <laughs> We're in it now. <laughs> we are in it to win it. How you doing, Jason? We sure are, bro. Oh, this is a fun bro. one. Bro, <laughs> bro Ham. Do you do bra? In any of your <laughs> you know, texts, do you do B-R-U-H? Or uh, I don't. You? I don't do it in text, but my okay. seven-year-old son has been calling me daddy bra. Oh, nice. He goes, what's up, daddy bra? Daddy I go, bra. where did you get this? Nice. You're homeschooled. You're not supposed to be picking up on the culture. Yeah, yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> hey, man. You know, that's all right. I like it. Well, cool. Hey, we're right at the top of the show. This is going to be a fun one because this episode is brought to you by the Detroit Baptist Theological Seminary. What's up? Whoa. We got the locals here with us, and we had a discussion with one of the pastors. They're having a free event on March 18th, so book your calendars, nice. mark your calendars. Friday, It's going to be March in 18th. Friday, March 18th. It's going to be uh, It's the Rice Lecture Series. It's going to be in Allen Park at the Inner City Baptist Church. Mm. Guess who they have as their guest speaker? Who is it? Dr. Joel Beak. Beak. Puritan Reformed Theological Seminary. I met him at G3 Conference. Very he nice. is unbelievable. Guys, this is a free event, so if you're in the area, come up, get registered. You can go find out more at DBTS, so that's Detroit Baptist Theological Seminary, dbts.edu forward slash rice. Very nice. And we're going to link that up on the podcast for those guys. Yeah. I know um, you I'm going to be like there. a five-hour lecture. I mean, which, well, it's like a, <laughs> you know, whatever you hear right. the word lecture, you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> well, it's actually on the current issues of Christianity. Oh, that's um, great. Speakers include recognized theolo theologians and pastors with a commitment to the absolute authority of I scripture, oh, which yeah. we like. And we yeah. like Dr. Joel Beek. So um, I know I'm going to be up there. I know I think you're going to yeah, try I'm to make arrangements to, yeah. to get up yeah. there. Um, it's not too far from us. So if you're in the area, go check it out. We'll Definitely. link it up. So thank you, Detroit Baptist Theological Seminary. Oh, yeah. But on the line today, and our guest is Mr. Tom McMillan. Tom, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Greg. How are you doing? Pretty good. We are going to get into it uh, tonight. I think it's going to be a fun one. Yeah. I'm going to let Tom give a little bit of his background. Uh, but before we do that, you want to get into a little newsiness? Yeah, let's do that. Are you good over there? We just adjusted. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, sounds the, and the noises. Well, the past couple of shows, I've mm. noticed that my voice is super low on the recording. Yours is super loud. So I don't know if we switched Turn. the. But I don't. Oh. But I don't know if you're one or two. I wonder. Well, I don't know which ready? one you are now. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. We're gonna do a live test right <laughs> now. Are you ready? Serious? Watch this. Do say, it. say check. Check, check, check. You're two. I'm two. I'm just okay. a loud mouth. No, no, no. And you're you're reserved. Fine. I'm going to turn I, me down hey, a little bit. There we go. I'm all right. All right. Perfect. Look at that. Right. Look at that, Tom. We can even do hey, uh, sound, sound checks check. live. There sound we go. Check. Let's get into <laughs> newsy news. Here we go. News, the 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 news, <laughs> where do we start <laughs> i know right with what's going on this month there's so much going on right now it's just hilarious but this this is just a uh, uh yeah this it's not a feel-good story but it kind of is it's kind of good okay um so levi's executive resigns over um i can't say the c word uh, virus policy stance refuses a one million dollar non-disclosure severance a levi's executive on track to be the brand's next ceo resigned and refused a settlement that re would require she stay silent about the reasons once a national champion gymnast jennifer say announced okay. her resignation as levi's brand president in an essay published on substack the mother of four had been a vocal opponent of many of the virus 19 measures which yeah. impacted children including school closures and online learning throughout the pandemic say was pressured by her employer and outside groups to stop speaking publicly about virus policies wow. but was never forcibly silenced she was repeatedly told to think about what I was saying what she was saying. Sure. Um, so yeah. So anyway, she did not take the million dollar severance, even though it would have helped her family. She says there's but, people uh, left in this world with principle. Oh my goodness. And, and she's not afraid to tell you about it. So yeah, that was, that was a really cool little story. I mean, what, what are we looking at here? I mean, is this, is this something that we need to be loud and proud about, or should we take that million dollar bonus and be like, you know what? <laughs> Don't even worry about whatever you're trying to do to us, uh, Mr. Biden. Yeah, what do you think, Tom? Do you think she made the right decision? Yeah, I think she did. I mean, obviously, she um, she's probably pretty talented, so she'll probably go somewhere else. And mm. there's plenty of people out there that aren't buying this stuff. So I think she'll land somewhere that uh, is better for anyone. 
Yeah, the tithes are providentially. Providentially. providentially, there Provident. we go. Yeah, amen. Another reformed brother <laughs> on the line, too. We're going to get into that a little bit. Um, what else do we got, Jason? Yeah, yeah. So uh, here uh, we have we're going to have to touch on this, guys. Sorry. Um, the Canadian authorities announced new measures in the ongoing conflict with truckers. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Trudeau, whatever his name is, announced plans <laughs> to invoke the Emergencies Act uh. to end the weeks long protests staged in the capital city of Ottawa. Additionally, the Canadian uh, government has backlisted, blacklisted nearly 30 Bitcoin addresses in an attempt to cut funding to the protesters. The caravan of truck drivers is protesting broadly against virus 19. Um, restrictions and a jab man and the jab mandates. The reaction to Trudeau's plans among local officials was mixed. Doug Ford, the premier of Ontario, was supportive, saying, "We need law and order. Our country is at risk now." While Quebec's premier Francois Legoul, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my my Pepe Le Pew is not so good. It's pretty good. Uh, we'll take it. Felt this was the wrong direction for Canada. Posting at this point, it would not help the social climate. There is a lot of pressure, and I think we have to be careful. It wouldn't help for the polarization. Uh, the truck drivers remain united, uh, vowing not to leave unless forced out. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. We, we got, we have, I've heard everything from a hundred thousand dollar fines to, uh, people being, uh, uh, rolled over in the street by, uh, horseback, uh, pol police on horseback. Um, someone actually died the other day from, uh, uh being trampled really? by a horse. I didn't hear that. Yeah. This, so, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot going on within the, this isn't just like truckers sitting there blowing their horns. Um, there's a lot at stake here for Canada and yeah, right. I yeah. mean, what, what are you guys, what are you guys thinking about it? I mean, well, I, I will say this before we throw it over to Tom. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are just going full bore on this because now they, oh, absolutely. You know, authoritarian, yeah. totalitarian. I mean, they have, uh, they've rewritten their banking laws now for, if you give donations and they, Gosh. they've said it's domestic terrorism, they're arresting people who's bringing them gas. I did see a fun video clip of people uh, uh, like 20,000 people carrying fake gas cans <laughs> along with real ones. And they said, Jeez. they can't arrest us all. Yeah. Yeah. And I posted it to our <laughs> social media. I said, yeah, the resistance is always a little sneaky and oh, a little, you know, great. so you you see this video shot of probably 5,000 people all carrying two gas cans, some of them full, wow. some of them empty. And the cops just looking like, we don't know to, where to start. Yeah. Uh, but Tom, you are a three term state representative. You're now on the uh, Michigan State Board of Education, which we'll talk about here shortly. As a politician, this has got to be in a conservative one at that and a libertarian, I would say leaning. This has got to drive you insane, doesn't it? It does. And um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's hard to uh, imagine Canada staying quiet much longer. They're a rugged group of people. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, pleased that uh, that they're finally stepping up. I mean, I wish in in the United States, we had something like this, but uh, you know, we tried this in Michigan. I was one one of the people up in Lansing that kind of gridlocked uh, Lansing back in like May of 2020. First state, I think, first one in the country or in the world that really did a, you know, yeah. uh, started the protest. I was there both times. We had they had a they had a sequence a sequel too. So yeah, I mean, I think you know, protest is the bedrock, man. So um, I like to know how we get money to them. I don't know. Right. Yeah. And we'll link that stuff up on the uh, usually on our news, too. We link that stuff up, stuff up on the uh, website. And also when you listen to the podcast, you can click on the things that we're talking about. And uh, Jason, I did hear you say, I'm sorry about the news. Don't you ever apologize about that good news that you bring. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Jason, hey, we got, curtails this news gotta... for your smorgasbord you know your... there there is there is so much news going on right now and it's i know people are seeing the same stuff over and over and over and it's like yeah you know there but at a point you know we really do have to stop um uh collaborate and listen you know what i'm saying it, it all right hard to, <laughs> it's hard to kind of you know get the exact scoop i mean i don't know if we yeah. if you guys mention other podcasts but I listened to Tom Woods talk about this because mm. I trust him. Mm. And, you know, he's got the wherewithal to get the people that are in the know there in Canada. And it seems like it's totally legit. It's totally, you know, just uh, people fighting for freedom. So, you know, I, I think that we need to support them. I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. good thing. Yeah. So on our last one here, I'm going to round it out. I do have a little audio clip for the listeners. I want you to listen to this. This is in the Oakland 
school district in California. This is two teachers talking about their transition closets and what they are trying to institute in California in their district and then push it to the rest of the country. Listen to this 30 second clip and we'll talk about it. My principal just approved our district's first transition closet. We'll be working with the organization The Transition Closet to provide clothes for transgender, non-binary and gender exploring youth who maybe don't have the access or the safety to get those clothes uh, in their personal life. They'll be able to come to school and change into the clothes that make them feel more at home and more like themselves. And I just think that's lovely. The goal of the transition closet is for our students to be able to wear the clothes that their parents approve of, come to school, and then swap out into the clothes that fit who they truly are. Fit who they truly are. Listen to wow. that. What their parents approve of. And yeah. then when you get to school, you can do what you want and swap out into what you feel more comfortable in. Right. This made me livid just for the just for parental rights for many i mean government reasons. schools i feel like they don't care about your parental rights and we we posted that on our instagram and mm. got a got a lot of uh comments on it. Yeah. a lot of people agreeing though as well going yeah how yeah. can you how well, can you do that you it's, know it's on both sides of the of the of the uh aisle fence, fence though yeah. yeah fence aisle whichever side you want to say yeah it, it's like you you see people reacting the same way they're just like look my my kids are are uh being brought up in a certain way you know, and it's like you hear the you hear the different sides of it as well. At, at, that people are like, "Look, this is how I bring up my kid," and it's like, if but if you choose the this is how I bring up my kid in a biblical manner, mm -hmm. that's when the pushback happens. Right. It's not on the yeah. other side where people are like, "Oh, they can go in that transition closet, they can do whatever." It's like, no, like I mean, hold on a second. Yeah. You know? This is what makes it especially egregious for me. And Tom, tell me what you think, because this is going to get us into our discussion. Uh, it'd be one thing if you're instituting these and it's free of choice, I still wouldn't support it. But to blatantly say, oh, yeah, come to school and what your parents approve. And then essentially he's saying secretly without telling your parents, we're going to go ahead and change you into whatever you want to wear. I feel like that's just a gross overstep of what the school system is supposed to do. What do you think about that, Tom? Certainly. I mean, the subversion uh, of, of the parents' interests is, I mean, you know, I think that, uh, and I've been arguing this at the state board, you know, the amount of subversion, the amount, and they keep wanting more and more money, and yet they're so hostile. And I, when I say they, they, I always get a tweet or something that, oh, he thinks all teachers are horrible. No, I mean, there are some good teachers, you know, yada, yada. But I mean, the system uh, more and more is just opposed to parents uh, you know, having any say, they they don't want them to FOIA. They you know they want to learn what's going on, but then they charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for simple FOIAs. Um, you know, they throw roadblocks all over, and and then they want more money. And I really think that Republicans. I, I put out a Facebook post and said Republicans need to be held accountable when they're wanting more supplemental. You know, I mean, there's one thing. You know, there's the money that they get per child, but then there's supplemental money. Well, they shouldn't be sending any more supplemental money until they get. Parents' rights straightened out, the CRT, this SDL, all these uh, DEI, all these things are dealt with uh, in a way that we approve and the parents approve before, you know, they keep putting more money into the system. Oh, yeah. And I, I think that I, I've been arguing that, uh, you know, they, like I said, they keep wanting more. And I think more and more people are pulling their kids out. And at some point, you know, it's going to get to where they don't want to pay the, the regular taxes. People are going to say, why am I doing this? It's a hostile environment. Yeah. yeah. What, what happens in that situation? If somebody is going to a public school and then they're like, no, I'm going to homeschool. Do their taxes also come out of the public? <laughs> oh, I love you, no. Jason. No. Okay. I, I, mean, oh, wait, I, don't, wait. I don't know. No, no, no. He's right. <laughs> no, there's a <laughs> wishful thinking, Jason. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. They owe me no, 10 no years idea. worth and my dad 20 oh, years worth. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. No, but Jason, there no, but there is a penalty to the local school. They have one less child, so they get less. They get eight grand less or ten grand less. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And so you know the the system. I mean, the denominator goes down by one. So everybody as a, as the statewide actually gets a little bit more. You know, uh, you know, a tenth of a penny or whatever, because uh, it's the same money that is put in there from the sales tax, two percent of the sales tax. Uh, but the denominator keeps decreasing, but that individual school feels the pain. Wow. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, so are we, we good with the news? Yeah. 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 Y
And that was the newsy news. I love your outro. Yes. Okay, Tom, let's get into it because we touched on it a little bit and I know you have so much information. And um, be- before you tell us a little bit about yourself, I just want to say for people who listen on here, they know that uh, I am involved in politics. Um, I always say there's three good ones uh, at the federal level and two at the state. And boy, I'll tell you what, Tom, when you were in the house, I was a big supporter of yours. You were one of those one or two that are always hanging around there, a Gary Glenn type, a Tom McMillan, a Justin Amash, um, those type of guys that have such great principles and you don't bend. Now that doesn't mean you can't compromise, but you do not bend from your principles. Um, I was really hoping uh, things had turned out differently in your congressional run. And who knows? I'm so happy that you're on the state board, uh, though, because we need voices like you on that state board. So why don't you give us a little couple minute uh, background of who you are and what you've done? I know I kind of spoiled some of it, um, but introduce yourself to the audience. Sure. Yeah. Tom McMillan. I got involved in politics uh, in 98 uh, because uh, somebody wanted me to run for precinct delegate uh, and we were uh, fighting for the pro-life position within the party. So I got involved then, I was, uh, I ran, I've run several times for things and lost and won. And um, I, you know, I've, I've been a city councilman in Auburn Hills for nine years. I was mayor for two. I was a county commissioner for two years. I unseated a Democrat in Oakland County, the only one to, to, do, it, to do that uh, in 40 years, 50 years. Um, I, um, I was a state representative uh, from 2009, January 2009, I won in 2008, so 2009 to 2014. So I was term limited then. I ran for Congress, as you mentioned. I lost 60-40 in the primary um, to Mike Bishop. And um, then I ran in 2016 for State Board of Education and uh, won. I uh, was the top vote getter. And uh, Nikki Snyder is the other Republican. She won that year as well. So she and I sit on it, uh, on the board. Uh, there's six Democrats. Uh, we have eight-year terms. And uh, every, so every two years, there's two people up and there's two Democrats up this coming uh, November. Mm. Um, I'm a CPA by trade. Um, I own a couple CPA firms, a statewide one and a national one, and um, do well with that. And so that's kind of, I've married, uh, I am divorced, uh, not my choice, but back many years ago, and I have a 32 grandkids, a fourth on the way. and. I uh, remarried and um, uh, a Brazilian. I met her online, uh, christiancafe.com. She was in Brazil. Um, and uh, we have two children, uh, 15 and a 12 year old. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. So, can, can you help me with my, uh, my stock trading uh, taxes <laughs> by any chance, my wash sales? And no, yeah, no, actually, I'm not a tax, I'm not a tax guy. I came up with okay. okay. I, I don't know taxes well. Uh, I pay right. a CPA to do mine. <laughs> nice, nice. Right. So, oh, what, very cool. So, Tom, what got me uh, thinking about you again was uh, some uh, some resolutions that were coming to your board. Uh, and I know we communicated back and forth and thank you for that information, confirming some things, stuff like that. It's always good to go right to the source of the people dealing with it instead of uh, trusting what you read or see mm-hmm. online. And then and I what f- you can't get to <laughs> online. What, you, what you can't I was get just to on the online. CDC website tonight, trying to get some extra info for this. And it's like pulling <laughs> they, teeth, like, they bury like it. just give me the information, <laughs> like, just right. give, you know, but, yeah. what yeah. a government website was right, hard right. to use. Yeah, right. Right. I thought they did everything oh perfectly gosh. and efficiently. It's just crazy. Oh man. Sorry. No. I, I cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're Greg. good. Uh, but so can you give us a little update on the, um, on the, maybe just for the past year on the Michigan board of education, some of the resolutions that you've seen in this uh, pandemic um, and, and what you foresee going forward. I know that I have groups down here. I'm sure you're aware of it. You have parents, you have moms, you have unmasked groups, you have, Hey, we need to know what's in the curriculum groups. I mean, we're really seeing an uprising uh, in the public yeah. school sphere right now. And you're kind of at the, I wouldn't say the legislative top of that, but you guys kind of set the tone. Uh, maybe explain exactly what the Michigan board of education does and kind of what you guys have been discussing and considering over the last six months to a year. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we, um, you know, we, our main goal, our main job is to hire and fire the state superintendent who then oversees all hundreds of uh, Michigan department of education. We all, that's one of them. The other one is we pass standards. And so I've been trying to, you know, fight against even the common core back many years ago and still do that. But, you know, standards that come up, whether, I mean, we just passed standards on, um, 
you know, preparation of middle school and high school science teachers uh, last, last month. And so, you know, we passed those kind of standards uh, and also educational uh, standards for the students and what's taught. Uh, big fight over um, social studies a couple of years ago that I lost. And so, uh, you know, there, there's very little mention of anything bad that came out of any uh, communist uh, regime or uh, huh. fascist regime, of course. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, we've had some resolutions now, you know, these resolutions uh, don't have any particular power, but they do kind of send a signal sometimes. So I've been fighting, you know, CRT and, you know, the $6 billion that we got from the state or from the feds that, you know, was for uh, uh, the virus relief. You know, I guess you can't say the word. Uh, okay. And so, um, you know, and how that was going to be spent and the governor put together, a, a, you know, a commission or a committee and the head of it came before us and I was really going after him because part of it was talking about had CRT links and kind of things that uh, was kind of encouraging CRT pretty heavily. And so I uh, fought, have been fighting that or exposing it. I mean, when you're in the minority, two, six, you, you really try to expose and, you know, and, and. So yeah. I've been doing that. Uh, we had resolution recently um, on universal masking and, and also universal um, vaccine. And surprisingly, two of the Democrats flipped and voted against it. The, the Dems were uh, brought it for us. So it ended up failing. Um, and I think two of them are a little bit more uh, astute politically. The others are more, I shouldn't say the others, but I think there's a progressive strain that really tries to push at no cost, you know, whatever the cost. And I think a couple of the others were a little bit more practical, uh, you know, and same thing with Whitmer. There's a reason why she's not, you know, pushing for a statewide mask mandate or wasn't for, you know, many months. It's to the chagrin of some of the, the left, the hard left. So uh, it's because the election's coming up. I mean, mm -hmm. we know it's all politics, these decisions. Yeah. There's no science behind any of it. There's nothing um, so, yeah, I mean, those are some of the things we've got to, uh, we're in, a, we're um, evaluate, we got the annual evaluation for the uh, state superintendent uh, this coming month. And, uh, you know, Nikki and I, we certainly have problems with them. He's, he's uh, not, uh, he, he, he certainly was hired by the Democrats and he's, he certainly is performing as they would want. Oh. Yeah. And for those listening to uh, you'll hear Tom referred to, uh, you know, Democrats and Republican and things like that. And I know, I just want to let you know, and the listeners, uh, he, he's not as he's re you're referring to that, I would think, because it is a party system up there. Right. You do yeah, have two right. parties. Uh, but but I, I don't know if that's necessarily we're pointing fingers at one party. I think we're pointing fingers at ideology, whether it's progressive, oh, yeah. leftist, Absolutely. liberalism, yeah, I work, Democrat. I work with the Democrats regularly or in the past on um, kind of reducing high stakes testing on things that's kind of unusual for a Republican to get involved with. But no, I you know, and I. I worked with Democrats when I was in the legislature on, you know, the ACLU. I got hand, I got kind of beat up in uh, in my congressional primary, but um, you know, I I worked with the ACLU on issues that I, you know, on uh, SWAT raids, uh, you know, uh, transparency and um, you know, indigent defense reform and you know, criminal justice reform things. So you know, civil civil asset forfeiture. So yeah, I work with Democrats quite a bit. It's just that you know, when it comes down, there's a lot of party line votes, you know, they got to toe the line or they don't get renominated. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I had a, uh, <laughs> I had a made up conspiracy that I came up with um, uh, <laughs> last month or the month before. And I just want to share it with you guys and see what you think. But uh, okay. Okay. So check this out. Oh, so exactly what you just said, Tom. Um, I said, uh, back in December, November, I was like, look, everybody, you know, at the, at the family function during uh, the holidays, I was like, look, within the next three months, uh, the virus is going to be dwindling down. Cases are going to go away yeah. and everything's going to go back to normal. And then everything's going to be smoothed out. The mar the, the stock market is going to start going up around May or June and then, <laughs> and then, you know, by the time November shows up, everybody's going to forget everything that happened in 2020, 2021, 
And, uh, you know, and every, yeah. uh, you know, the progressive left is going to look like, you know, they, they, the darling, they yeah. yeah. Like they just came up with the, the perfect answer and everything. And then they're going to get voted back in. So what, what did you guys take on what's going to happen <laughs> within the next 10 months? So that is conspiracy. I would say okay, that's conspiracy. Very quickly. All right, that, that's, all right. I love how you call it conspiracy. <laughs> Tom and I call that politics. Okay. Okay. That's, all that's right, reality. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, what do you, so what do you think, Tom? Are we going to see, I mean, we're already kind I mean, of seeing it. You're calling seeing it. it right now. Cause like, he I said mean, on this podcast, he goes, don't worry guys stock market's coming back yeah. in the spring COVID's gonna it be going we're gonna be talking about climate change we said yeah. okay and it's already trending that way yeah yeah exactly yeah i don't know but inflation unemployment and there's some things that they can't manipulate too well right. or people the general people know and i also think that the you know they want to be able to manipulate the votes or at least you know get the mail in and the drop boxes and the mm -hmm. things that you know getting the vote the uh the ballot out of the hands of the clerks and yeah. into the hands of, you know, the community organizers. So mm -hmm. they want to do that. So, you know, there's going to be a dance here. They're going to, maybe they'll ramp it up just before, you know, the, the ballots are supposed to go out so that they can uh, do some more manipulation of, right. of handling right. of the ballots. But yeah, I, I mean, you know, and also we knew that, you know, th this virus was going to continue to go to where it's more of a cold, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know how quickly, I mean, there's still, yeah, yeah. it's still a thing, but yeah, uh, for sure. you know, the latest, uh, I, the latest version or whatever it is, uh, strain is not all that bad at all. Yeah. 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 We, we, uh, down here, um, I'm sure you already know, uh, my, my, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you my, my stepdaughter, Aubrey, she just got the mask mandate dropped at her junior high school here in uh, uh, at Bed Bedford. Yep. And, um, and that was last week, right? That was last week. Yep. And, you know, the, the, the stuff that we were seeing through uh, just, I don't know, just through data. And I, I don't want to be a nerd here and, and nerd it up. Give you all the, all the stuff that I've, I've seen over the past, you know, few months or whatever, but you know, the, the, the PTSD, the, you know, the things that these kids are right. going through uh, for not being able to see facial recognition of, uh, you know, if somebody's happy, if somebody's sad, right. you know, or, yeah. or, or whatever, there's, there's so yeah. many things, you know, that, that we're hearing about. How are you guys kind of navigating? And I know this is a broad question. <laughs> That's, I'm not going to bring it home with like <laughs> what the question is, forgive me, but like, how do you guys really navigate through all of that with a mask mandate? And if you're going to implement it again, or, you know, take it away and keep it away or, or like, how, how does that actually have, how do you actually say, look, everybody has to have a mask on, <laughs> you know, like, like, how does all of that work uh, in the government house? Yeah. What's going on with those you eight know? people in that room? <laughs> right. We want to know what's up. Like, yeah. Yeah. For, these are like, making some recommendations over of there. kids, you know, like, like what, like, I mean, I'm sure it's gotta be extremely tough, but yeah. So you're asking, how you know how do we navigate yeah how do you navigate just like okay we're gonna make everybody wear a mask or we're gonna take this mask mandate away like what like what what's the no, factors I, you know like are there I mean, enough I, people yelling at you guys and running you down in the streets being like well, I mean, if you watch, <laughs> it's pretty funny if you, if you watch the last few state board meetings we were uh remote for quite a while but we started going in person a few months ago mm. and nikki schneider and i the two republicans are the only two without masks in the whole room oh, really? i mean everybody else oh, has great. a mask yeah. um, and you know they they just want you know so I I um I, you know I think that we certainly fight it I mean if somebody you know it, it gets into where if it's their livelihood or I know that people feel like they don't have options with education but mm -hmm. um yeah I mean it's it it's a battle worth fighting and I've had superintendents say you know I mean now that the the counties are the ones making the decision which is still really bad obviously but yeah uh, yeah I mean, you know, there are plenty of counties that uh, that said no, and uh, I guess you know the the virus kind of skipped over that county line. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I guess and the whole states and yeah, certain, to, certain to put states. a to put a finer point on your question because I'm interested. Yeah. When I look at the data, okay, and and I'm not a you know I'm not a nerd. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a you know a biologist. All these things, but I can read data and I can look at charts and I can look at uh, personal experience and all those things. Uh, I see something that 
probably does not warrant masking children for eight to 10 hours a day. I guess to Jason's point, when you have eight of you sitting in a room or at uh, maybe before a meeting or during a meeting, or when you talk to your colleagues without giving specific names, what is driving, do you think, not only the people you work with on the State Board of Education, but also maybe in the legislature or in school districts, what is driving, and I'll just say it, it feels like almost like a psychosis of supporting something that just isn't supported by the facts. We know masks don't work. Anyone with a brain has been saying that for two years. Of course, the CDC just flipped on that. But I mean, especially in children, it's a what, 0.0004% chance of them even catching it. Like, what do you think it is that's saying mask, 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 when all the data points point against that? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's been discussed a lot. You know, it's the media. I mean, I think what they read there, I think most of them are genuinely convinced. I think some of them want to do their part. You know, it's like they, uh, you know, and it's, it's ridiculous. They feel like, uh, but it, yeah, I mean, it, it, they're shaming, there's, you know, peer pressure. I don't know. It's all of that, Greg. I, uh, it, it's disturbing. I mean, I think there are people that really were interested in knowing how far they could push it, how far, how authoritarian could government get. And then they stopped and pushed, you know, and let, let back. I think we're, it's not the last time we've seen this. I think they're taking notes and realizing what worked and what didn't. And they're going to, you know, push for control again. I think it's really authoritarian. It's not, I mean, the numbers and, you know, they, they wouldn't give out the scientific data here in Michigan. Uh, the governor refused to give out what, what she's basing any of her decisions on. Wow. No data. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and, I mean, there was just, uh, and there was never a, once we hit this, I'll, I'll reduce things. And, you know, it just, it's, uh, it was political. I mean, I think yeah. we've seen that certainly it's political. Okay. Let me shift gears here a little bit as we're winding this down. So uh, in the last news uh, segment, we, we played uh, about that transition closet. We're seeing kind of uh, school principals and teachers usurping the authority of parents in your opinion, as someone who is on the State Board of Education and also a legis uh, you know, you, you made legislation for uh, six years at the state level, what is the role of principals, teachers, superintendents versus parents? Does one serve the other? Does one not have a right to say? Is it, because I've heard it on both sides. Hey, look at, you pay your taxes, keep your mouth shut. Our job is to educate. Your job is to drop them off and give them food when they get home after school. And on the other side of that, you see, no, hey, I'm a parent. I have a right. I pay, you know, uh, your your salary essentially. If I'm a taxpayer, where do you where do you land on that? Well, I mean, the state law, Section three eighty point one zero, Michigan law, it is the natural fundamental right of parents and legal guardians to determine and direct the care, teaching, and education of their children. Huh. Um, so, I mean, it you know, it is a um, you know, they, they should be able to, you know, to direct, just like it says, the teaching of their children. So they should have, you know, the, the school should be able to uh, accommodate and to listen to parents and really, um, really do what they, what the parents think. I mean, there, you know, you, I guess there has to be some order, Sure. Uh, but, you know, the fact that there's not much choice so that, you know, it would be nice if they had, you know, if this school did what the parents said, or else the parents could have another option. And some, you know, we know they do, they have homeschooling and some private schooling, but if there were some other, uh, you know, paid for public options that were more readily accessible, I think you would, I, when you see, when you have those situations, they, the schools tend to be more caring what the parents think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that they, the schools really need to be, uh, you know, doing what parents can as much as possible or what they want, what the parents uh, want yeah. in their it's, it's It's been incredible to see some of these, uh, these meetings with the superintendents and the school boards where parents will show up extremely angry asking why a certain book is in their library, why these kids are getting their hands on things um, at such an early age, being taught things at such an early age. Um, and it's amazing how most of those parents, and, and I'll be honest, guys, it, it's more women that are fired up than men. Mm -hmm. and yeah. it Which is, is a real problem, I think, as believers. Yeah, as a believer, I, I really think that, you know, men, 
men need to step up, man. You know, um, if we go to Isaiah three, I'm mm -hmm. just going to read the first five verses for behold, the Lord God of hosts is taking away from Jerusalem and from Judah support and supply all support of bread and all support of water, the mighty man and the soldier, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the captain of 50 and the man of rank, the counselor and the skillful magician and the expert in charms. And I will make boys their princes and infants shall rule over them. And the people will oppress one another, everyone his fellow and everyone his neighbor. The youth will be insolent to the elder and the and the despised to the honorable. Now look, I mean, we're in a generation where men are afraid. <laughs> men are afraid, not every man, but right. there are a lot of men out there that are afraid to lead. And there are a lot of men out there that are afraid to stand up for their kids. I just encourage every man out there right now to get involved with whatever your kids are seeing at school, whatever they're reading, whatever they are being told, and just stand up and teach them biblically what should be, you know, involved in uh, in their teaching. Um, you know, it is it's just sad to see, um, you know, a lot of that in our culture. But uh, yeah. like I said, I, I digress back to the the parent teacher conferences where, you know, you see these these people standing up and saying, "Look, uh, why are my children being taught this curriculum?" that has nothing to do with their development at this age. You know, I, I can, I can say that like, you know, our, our children definitely need to know about the world. That's, that's for sure. And, and, and we are on a uh, Christian podcast too. So we have a certain worldview, <laughs> <laughs> a little but, uh, but yeah, yeah. But, but again, it's, it's, you know, uh, these, these superintendents that will walk out of those meetings and not do anything whatsoever that that you hear about it's more or less just like yeah that's just shut just just suppress this person whatever they're saying you know they're uh not everyone agrees with them well not everyone doesn't agree on both sides but how do we exactly fight the the tyrannical you know your children are going to be part of our progressive regime we're going to take eight hours a day of your kid's life and you only get two because you've been at work all day and they have to go to bed to get back up in the morning right, right, to right. come back to our school for 13 you know, years for yeah. yeah for 13 I'll 14, tell you, you know, it has so. been encouraging and you know i know you didn't mean that it's a problem that moms are rising up but no it's dads, not a yeah well, because, no we yeah, want to see some dads, dads in there too dads we want to see dads and moms, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. husbands and wives united yeah. together moms, and raising right, the next yeah. liberty this, yeah. this group moms for liberty has been rising up all around the country and uh it's exciting. Now, I think a lot of these elected officials, Greg, you probably understand what I'm talking about. They look at how far out is the elections. And if it's far out, it's still a year or so. They think, well, these people will all go away. You know, I mean, let them say their thing. Yeah. But Christians and conservatives, you know, they kind of uh, they fight, but then they they go back to, uh, you know, and, and they have families. They ch they're in active in church. They're very active. You know, we're a very active people. And uh, but it's, you know, it's really encouraging. I, I know a lot of people running for school board, the election, the deadlines yeah. to run are coming up in April. Um, and, you know, as long as this fervor continues, because they're counting on it not continue. They're counting on people saying their piece. OK, we heard you now go home and, you know, just do what, you know, we're not going to we're going to, you know, not care what you think. It is. It's uh, it's more and more, you know, and they're calling us, ter you know, parents terrorists, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, terrorists. putting them in so, jail. <laughs> I mean, hostility, these people, there's going to be a price. There's more and more pulling them out uh, of the public education. And, um, you know, and there's just people that are, you know, they're not going to support fun additional funding. Uh, that's what they want. And I, I think that there needs to be Republicans need to be held accountable if they're going to continue giving more supplemental money that's not ne not needed. Yeah, absolutely. And look, at that's why guys like you are needed. Um, I, I got to, you know, I could count on a couple hands, the guys I go to, I'm not going to expose on the podcast, all the things you're involved in, but your name comes up often in my circle of friends, just because you're involved in a lot of grassroots things. And it's, and if you're a believer, 
and and you uh, and you're seeing things happen, then you need to speak up and you need to get involved in those things. Part of civic duty is to do that. I think all three of us. I don't want to speak on behalf of Tom too much, but it sounds like we all agree in peaceful protests. Yeah, uh, we all agree. Yeah, you're not out there burning things down and breaking no, windows. Never. You want to drive some trucks through a city. You want to go to a pe- you know, pe- yeah, peaceful protest at your at your school board. <laughs> I'm all for it. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it biblically. But that brings me to the very last point as we wrap this up, Tom. So uh, we're all believers here. What is the biblical response to what we're seeing going on in the schools, in the usurping of parental rights out in California, um, you know, the, uh, the virus issues, the masking issues? We see things going in a way that we, we say that's definitely not biblical or, or conservative. Um, what's the biblical response to that, do you think, Tom? Well, you know, it really is, you know, the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's what parents are supposed to be doing. And if you're sending your children, you know, there are plenty of 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 good schools that, you know, are not hostile to parents that are out there that are, uh, you know, even uh, government schools. Um, But, you know, if you're sending your school, your children to school, you should know what they're doing. And if they're, if they are, uh, you know, this transition closet, if these people, if they're actually subverting your will and, uh, and hiding things. I was just at a Moms for Liberty in Ingham, and there were some teachers that were there that are kindergarten, kindergarten teachers. They said, this CRT stuff is going in, and we're, we're being forced to teach it, and, we're, and I wanted to tell the parents, and we aren't allowed to. Uh, and so, you know, this subversion, I think they need to really understand what is going on, and if it's, uh, if it's harming the nurture and admonition you know, they're being able to raise their children, I think they need to pull them out. You know, I mean, I don't uh, uh, and put get them in a place, either homeschool or get them in a school that's not going to be hostile to their views and into the, the what's best for their children. I yeah. think it's pretty clear, yeah. but I mean, the government school should not be subverting. I mean, we should not tolerate it as well. It, you know, we are accountable. We need to be good stewards of our money. Uh, right now, they're taking our money and giving it to these public schools. We all, whether you have kids or not in public, uh, in government schools, need to be uh, fighting and fighting hard and not letting this fervor go down. Um, run for boards and then make sure you're voting the right way in the elections. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's great. Way to go out. Jason, yeah. did you have anything else no, no, for Tom no, no. before that was we awesome. let him Thank go? you so much for, for jumping on our crazy podcast, Tom. Yeah, sure. <laughs> absolutely. No, guys. You guys are out there. As as always, guys, we appreciate you listening to Dead Man Walking podcast. You know, I'm kind of upset that, you know, we we I wore our Wynum Dynum Romans Ninum shirt tonight and we didn't wear our teach CRT in schools, Christian reform theology. We really should have wore that t-shirt that that we created. That would have been perfect for this show, but maybe we'll send Tom one. We can can snap a picture of him wearing one, but you guys can get all that (laughs) merch and swag. (laughs) Yeah. Wear wear your teach CRT Christian reform theology shirt in your state board of education (laughs) meeting. There you go. Give us a shout out, but uh, you can find all that at dmwpodcast.com. Of course, you guys can follow us on Facebook, social media, Parlor, Getter, uh, all those places. I think Getter. we're on Rumble now, uh, Instagram at Dead Men Walking Podcast. We appreciate you guys listening, sharing with a friend. That's the only way that this grows. We give all glory to God when we do it. And uh, Tom, we thank you so much for being on, taking time out of your busy schedule to give us a little update. We really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Anytime. I'm just so thankful for you guys. Thanks right. so much. Thanks so much. Guys, Jason, you got anything before we leave? No, good to go. All right, guys, as always, God bless. Beep. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Dead Men Walking Podcast for full video podcast episodes and clips or email us at deadmenwalkingpodcast at gmail.com. None you-